Hi and welcome back. I'm John and this is Unique Wargaming Terrain. In the last video I was showing you how to take um, ruins from just your off-cut pieces of, of terrain and I picked up a, a piece of a piece of polystyrene that you would get from a white goods washing machine. I think actually that piece was from a washing machine but um, I was showing you like if you break it up randomly you can make some nice you know ruined structures now in the process of me breaking it up to show you the first thing is I, i'd cut three bases if you haven't seen the video go back and have a look at it and you'll know what i'm talking about i cut three bases and the pieces that i broke were too big for the bases and upon breaking them i realized there's some nice shapes and nice interesting um designs on there that i could really use in other ways rather than just ruins for example this piece here as i said this should make a nice side of a building a little bit of embellishment along the pillars and you know or you could cut this piece out of the hot knife and you've got a nice little entrance way with you know even the top's not too bad with a little bit of work some you know linen here and there you've got some nice little platforms for half ruined you know um so then i had the idea instantly what I should do is make a nice get cut a nice big board and put this down on the board and just make a, a nice piece of terrain but on a big big scale and then I thought oh okay why don't I just do uh, a gaming board for the new 9th edition of 40k and use those pieces like a cityscape type of um, ruins and then what happened was I reached out to the um, on Facebook to the 40k kit bashers group and one of the guys on there told me the measurements you need for the because I don't have the 40k rule book here at the moment with COVID and everything else I can't go to Dublin so I looked at the measurements 40, 40, uh, 44 inches by 90 inches and that's okay that's, that's a big big board so I started measuring here so I don't have board that size it's the wrong you know dimensions the board I have to what I need so I cut a piece of board and I believe it's 31 inches by 31 inches something like that and it's only after I cut it that I realize that you have two boards it's stupid I have two boards and I should have really cut it um, instead of doing it 44 by 90 I should have cut one board 22 by 45 and done the same again so I have two boards now, what's the point in that? Because you have two boards, you build your train on them, and this is a game board, big size game board, for games of 40k. You probably play Kill Team on it as well if you wanted to. But the the beautiful thing with this, they're two separate. So you can take one and switch them over. Yeah, you can take one, turn it around, play, or turn it around, switch it over. Uh, you can take the whole thing and turn it around. That, the dimensions, possibilities for what you're doing with what you have is just but in my haste I cut this board so but my initial but upon realizing that I still thought okay well look, I can still have this as a, a big piece of terrain and a big game board and um, so what I'm going to do with these videos I'm going to show you what I'm doing I'm going to do some work on it and film some work on it and stuff like that and hopefully it's great but what I want to do is I really want to go to town on this so I think there'll be a lot of me explaining this is what we're doing here this is what we're doing there but the rest of it's gonna be pretty much this is what I've done and you'll just see you'll see it as a bit of polystyrene and you'll see it as wow you'll be like, oh, okay um, so sit back and enjoy and two maybe three parts I'm not sure but sit back and enjoy right guys so here's where we are this is the bolt yeah nice big size okay these are the shape I've just laid them out in a rough rough idea but with that said this is the edge of the bolt okay 12 inches takes you up to about here so if you're doing a 12 inch a basic game 12 inches up either side you're in the ruins you still can set up in the ruins and the thing is, there is a nice amount of interesting shapes here. I mean, ignore this for a minute because I was putting this in the corner here, but I've put these on, 
pit blocks on the corners just to make sure it doesn't bow up. Um, bought some plans. I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but there's farmers outside working. So if you do hear that, I do apologize. But I've bought some plans. I'm not sure about this space. I was thinking about cutting it and just getting rid of this top part of this like, slope and using that in the corner over here. But I'm not 100% sure with that. That might even just be cut out and just, I don't know. This is a nice piece. Now I'd have to do something here, which would probably bring me cutting and just maybe squaring this off a little bit. I'm not too sure. This piece over here, I need to reinforce this because it's not that strong. And I was actually thinking, because these are the same height. I was actually thinking of making a walkway to go across there. Again, not sure. I'm definitely gonna have some steps coming out. So you can, so the models can go up there. Um, now this piece here, okay. I'm actually thinking about cutting that out a little bit to make a part like a doorway through. There's a nice little piece here. Again, this is just a random piece I get out and it looks absolutely fantastic. There's a random block there. You know, I'm still I'm unsure with these two pieces. I'm thinking about just taking the tops off. I'm not sure yet, but that's where I'm at at the moment. The other problem I have, if I start gluing stuff to this base, I have to think about weight distribution because it might start bowing. So what I'm thinking is maybe putting, gluing a thin piece of polystyrene across the top, better than the edges. Not so that it, come, so that it doesn't come right to the edge because this is beveled uh, already. So I'm thinking about just having it so it comes to about here onwards and having it beveled so you just move up. But I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm not, because I messed up on the base originally, I'm sort of just taking a day or so just to process and have a think about stuff before I mess it all up again. Um, so that's where I'm at at the moment. Here we have it guys. Um, I haven't, obviously I've not finished it yet. I've just glued this side down. I went with um, putting a polystyrene base on the board. The reason I thought of this is because if I glue stuff to the polystyrene, then if the polystyrene lifts, it's only going to lift the polystyrene slightly. It will very, very little, sorry, very little, if anything, lift the board at all. If I glue it straight to the board, it might lift the board a bit more then, and it'd be noticeable on the edges, start making it bow and everything else. And also I thought, because this is polystyrene stuff, I can actually cocktail stick, snip and pin the bits into the polystyrene board, then glue the uh, pin, uh, glue and push the pieces on top of the cocktail stick. So it holds it all together. This is what I've done here. Um, I think I did that on time-lapse. Yeah, I'm getting there. Um, and the second thing I decided was, when I first laid it all out, I was like, oh yeah, that's great, that's fantastic, yeah, we'll do this, we'll do that, blah, 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 blah. I went away for a couple of days, left the polystone to, to dry on the on the board. And I was, had a thing about it, had a thing about it. And then I thought to myself, no, what I want is a piece of terrain, yeah, a big massive piece of terrain, which is what this is. As it stands at the moment, you can play from left to right, yeah? You can only turn the board around so many times to mix the games up. And don't get me wrong, the, the way things are laid out here at the moment, it's gonna be some very good games. You can get tanks in, you can, you know, I mean, I've got a space room bike in here. I think you might've seen it on the time lapse bit. You know, it's not lost. It's not, oh, invisible. It's not taking up too much space. It's, it actually looks okay there. Um, so what I decided was if I leave areas where I can add pieces of terrain. I've got some barricades here. Yeah, I've got the, the bottle lid barricades. And they're not lost. They actually look okay, they look good. And I thought, well, if we can add stuff like that, you have areas where you can do things like that, you can just change things every game. You can have objective markers in there. You can have um, monuments in there. Uh, you know, all that sort of thing. 
and the other thing I come across, I was going to use these. These are plastic uh, space dividers. They come in boxes where the material can be squashed, uh, but they're heavy. So they go in the corner of the boxes and it stops them from squashing the ones below them. They're plastic ones, textured, absolutely fantastic. I, I made a space marine bunker a prototype, but used these in the corners of the you know buildings. And actually fantastic. The only problem with these are, is they are too hard to cut through. You, you can cut through them, but they're a pain in the ass. So the other day I found the cardboard ones. <laughs> Brilliant to cut through, absolutely amazing to cut through. I've actually made a walkway here. There's going to be two walkways. I've actually took one off this side to use the middle piece of polystyrene as it's all the same height to fit the uh, bits of MDF wood on to push the weight down to help that uh, pin and, and glue to there. But these, I've cut this one down to size, and I don't think you can see that on the camera too well. But the Space Marine, perfect height. I've cut it down only 20 minute, only 20 millimeters from the corner upwards. Now, and the good thing with that as well, because it's a really thick card, I can actually really embellish that. I can put bits of sprue coming up of it. I can put uh, bits of, you know, corrugated card to make it look like rain shackle. Uh, they put up a little barricade to try and help protect them and whatever else. Yeah, I mean, that's forgive the space room's not finished yet. That's I haven't painted any forty k stuff since second edition. Um, but I've got a space from a tech bike there that is painted, but it needs my painting skills have improved by then since then, so I need to just touch it up a little bit. Um, so I'm just working on that because I, I want to try and have that unit, this jump pack unit, and a few other units finished and painted. So when this is all finished, I can show you some pretty pictures with the models on there, and you can see, you know, it gives you a better idea of my driving than me just go, oh, look, this is pretty pictures, it's nice and nice. You actually get to see how good it how good it is and how good it would be um i've got 101 ideas going around my head to do with what i'm going to do here what i'm going to do there but i need to really just focus on one bit get that done move to the next bit get that done and then look at tying two pieces in or just look at the walkways and stuff like that but yes coming along well uh i'm going to do some more to this for this video but um yeah just have a look and I'll see you in a bit. <clears throat> right guys, so this is going, that side's going. I've only got these two little bits this side. Um, I'm gonna probably wait for them to dry before I start doing these bits because I used this side to weigh it down and everything else. Um, <clears throat> it's coming all very nicely. I'm very, very pleased, very happy with some things so far. Um, if you've liked this video, please hit the subscribe, the share, like button, and turn on your notifications. For future videos and this is obviously going to be a few parts um thanks guys for watching i look forward to seeing you next time